Good evening, fellow gamers. Well, here's a bit of news. <clears throat> NBA 2K21 price is $10 more expensive now, Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. So, there's been a talk here in this article about uh, how games in the next generation will be more expensive than previous generation, or yeah, the last 30 years or something like that. Because many, many people complain about the prices of game these days, like, oh, $60 is too much for a game, I won't pay that. There is one thing to keep in mind, though. Uh, the price on game hasn't really decreased or increased, or it hasn't increased in the last years, uh, or in decades. It has more like decreased actually. It be has become ch cheaper to buy both consoles and games if you count inflation. But the question still remains, are you willing to pay up to like was uh, 69 pounds or 69 dollars, 69.99 dollars for a game? That's a good question. <laughs> I didn't buy that much games back in the 90s, 80s. Uh, I wasn't even alive in the 80s actually. But here we have uh, the Xbox One and PS4 versions are due on September 4th with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X edition set to launch alongside the new machines later this year. 2K says the more expensive versions have been built from the ground up for the next generation consoles. The issue around the game pricing was uh, discussed by former PlayStation exec Sean Layden during the Game Lab conference last month. He told attendees at the event, it's been $59.99 since I started in this business, but the cost of games have gone up to 10 times. If you don't have elasticity on the price point, but you have huge volatility, on the cost line, the model co becomes more difficult. I think this generation is going to see those two imperatives collide. A lot of new words from me there, actually. But this is kind of interesting. Because, as you can see up here, it says that NBA 2K21 will have a recommended price tag of $69.99 or £64.99 when it launches on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X this year. And which is $10 more than the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One version, which is $59.99 and £59.99. Isn't that 50 more pounds and 10 more dollars? Anyway, that's kind of interesting. But uh, considering how much newer this technology is, because it seems to me that the leap from PlayStation 4 and Xbox One to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X is a bigger step than from PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 to the current generation. The step seems to be bigger in both performance and graphical quality, as, but mostly in performance, of course, which is kind of interesting. Uh, does that justify a bigger price in the games? Because they are look better and they run smoother and so on and so forth. Well, if it takes more time and it takes a lot more money to make a 10 hour game uh, for the new generation than it does for the this generation, the current one, I would say it could warrant a price increase. If we look at a, another article published by IGN on, it, this is a very old article then, uh, it's published on 15th of October 2013. But here we can read, games are essentially cheaper than they ever been. An NES game in 1990 cost on average about $50. That's $89 in 2013 money. Your $70.64 cartridges in 1998 were required the equivalent of $100 today. 
Heck, the $50 PlayStation 2 game you bought in 2005 is worth $60, the exact price of a typical retail game in 2013. This is, of course, counting inflation that they talk about here. Uh, I will link both these uh, articles in the description below. Uh, dollar to dollar over the, over the past 35 years, gaming hardware and software is generally cheaper than ever. And here we can see consoles being released. Uh, the Atari 2600, released in 1977, cost $199. $0.999. Inflation rate is 258.9% and the new cost for this console today with inflation would be over almost $800. That's, that's a lot. I mean, of course, a phone that you buy for that kind of price would be stronger and better than the Atari, but People are willing to pay more for a phone these days than a console. So and I, I get more fun of my console than I get my phone. The phone I use most, most, my phone I use mostly because I need one because people want to read me. Well, sometimes at least people want to reach me sometimes. And even the Xbox 360 here would go for $479 in, that's in 2013, that is. That's uh, quite an increase by 19.8%. But it says Xbox One, well, I don't know what I have that one is for comparison, maybe. And the Saturn would go for $613. PlayStation 3 with an increase of 16%, less than the Xbox 360. But it also had a much higher starting price, which is kind of why it lost that race. But if we go down here, we can also see the uh, Nintendo consoles, NES, SNES, Nintendo 64, GameCube, Wii, and Wii U. The GameCube is, according to this article, the cheapest one. The cheapest Nintendo console, when taking inflation into account, is the GameCube. And it go, would have gone for $264.25 this in 2013. Well, if you count inflation, it would be this equal price. And the Wii that released in 2006 would have go would go for 290. That's not too much of an increase, but it's also made in 2016, 2006, so it's not that old yet. But a NES would have would is the same equivalent of 434 dollars in this money or in 2013. So it's seven years old. So it's what five dollars more? I don't know. But this is also interesting. The original Game Boy launched in 1989 for a mere $89.99. That's 1989. That's a lot of money in 1989. And now it would cost only cost $169. Still cheaper than the uh, Nintendo Switch, but the Nintendo Switch is nicer. And it's both handheld and stationary, so. Game Boy Color, released in the summer of 1998, would, for the low sum of $69.99, would cost only $100. And lastly, the Game Boy Advance continues the trend, launching in the early summer of 2001 for $99.99, the equivalent on, of $132 today. And here we see some of the more handheld consoles from Nintendo. And yeah, this is kind of interesting. Here are some more in, uh, handhelds. Yeah, so are you willing to buy, or willing to buy? Are you willing to uh, pay, well, I would say 70 to about $80 for a game in the next generation? Are you willing to pay that? I would, to me, I kind of, Let's say you go to the movies. A ticket costs, one ticket costs like $15 maybe? Possibly more, I'm not sure the prices in US or 
any other country except my own country, but about $15, say. And for $15, you can get maybe one and a half to three hours of entertainment, let's say, from a movie. I would say two hours in at average, maybe. And that's if it's a good move and the sound system is awesome in the theaters. My only problem is the sound is too high. But yeah, you get a decent amount of entertainment. But let's say you pay $70 for a game. That's about five, six times, five to between five and six times as much. But you get 10 hours out of that. That's up to three times as much entertainment as well. But let's say the game might, might even be longer. It's 50 hours long. You get well, a lot of more times, like 20 times more entertainment out of it. So the price could be fair, but that's up to each individual, I would say, and what the game is. I mean, some games today are worth the full $60 and possibly even more. Some games are not. But I'll leave it up to you. What do you think about this uh, price change? Is it good? Is it bad? Are you willing to pay the price? I think I am. But uh, leave your thoughts down in the comments. I've been Swippy92, and thank you for watching. Have a great life, and bye-bye.